The book of Daniel, chapter 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and circled it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with parts of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasures house of his God. And the king spoke to Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring some of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, the children in whom there was no blemish, but who were handsome and skillful in all wisdom, and who had knowledge and understanding, even those who were able to stand in the king's palace, and to whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king gave them a certain part of the king's food and of the wine which he drank from each day, and so as to bring them up in this way three years, so that at the end of the three years they might stand before the king. Now among these were four of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave to Daniel the name of Belshazzar, and to Hananiah the name of Shadrach, and to Mishael the name of Meshach, to Azariah the name of Abednego. But Daniel made up his mind that he would not defile himself with the king's food, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he asked permission of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who has chosen your food and your drink. For why should he see your faces sadder than the children who are of your kind? Then you would put my head in danger to the king. Then Daniel said to Melzer, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, I pray you try your servants ten days, and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our faces be looked upon before you, and the face of the children who eat of the king's food, and as you see, deal with your servants. And so he listened to them in this matter, and tried them for ten days, and at the end of ten days their faces looked fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children who had eaten the king's food. And so Melzar took away their food and the wine that they were to drink, and gave them instead vegetables. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he would bring them in, the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, and the king talked with them, and among them all were found none like Daniel and Hananiah and Mishael and Azariah. Therefore they stood before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king asked them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his kingdom. And Daniel carried on unto the first year of the king Cyrus. Chapter 2, the prophecy of Daniel, chapter 2. Now in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams with which his spirit was troubled and his sleep left him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the fortune-tellers and the Chaldeans in order to show the king his dreams. And so they came and stood before the king. And the king said to them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will show the meaning. And the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, A thing has gone from me. If you will not make known to me the dream with the meaning of it, you shall be cut in pieces, and your house shall be made a dunghill. But if you show the dream and the meaning of it, you shall receive gifts and rewards and great honor from me. Therefore show me the dream and the meaning of it. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the meaning of it. But the king answered and said, I know that you surely want to gain time, because you see the thing is gone from me. 
But if you will not make the dream known to me, there is only one judgment for you. For you have prepared lying and deceiving words to speak before me until the time has changed. Therefore tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can show me the meaning of it. And the Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth who can show the king the king's manner. Therefore there is no king, lord, nor ruler, who asks such things from any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king asks, and there is no other who can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause the king was angry and full of fury and commanded all the wise men of Babylon to be destroyed. And the order went forth that the wise men should be killed, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to kill them. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, who had gone forth to kill the wise men of Babylon. And he answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and asked of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the meaning. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they might pray for the mercies of God in heaven concerning the secret, that Daniel and his companions should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. And Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and hast known to me now what is asked of thee. For thou hast now made known to us the king's matter. And therefore Daniel went in unto Arioch, whom the king had chosen to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went in and said to him, Do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show the meaning to the king. Then Arioch quickly brought Daniel in before the king, and said to him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah, who will make the meaning known to the king. And the king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen, and the meaning of it? And Daniel answered in the presence of the king, and said, The secret which the king has demanded, the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the fortune-tellers cannot show to the king, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and makes known to King Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head upon your bed are these. As for you, O king, your thoughts came to your mind upon your bed what should happen after this. And he who reveals secrets makes known to you what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living man, but so that they might make the meaning known to the king, and that you might know the thoughts of your heart. You, O king, saw and beheld a great image. The great image whose brightness was excellent stood before you, and the form of it was fearful. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms were of silver, his belly and his thighs were of brass, his legs were of iron, his feet were part of clay and part of iron. And you watched until a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image upon its feet, which were of iron and clay, and broke them to pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold were broken to pieces together, and they became like chaff of the summer threshing floor. And the winds carried them away so that no place was found for them. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the meaning of it before the king. You, O king, are a king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, and he has given you power and strength and glory. And wherever the children of men, the beasts of the fields, and the birds of the sky live, 
He has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. And after you shall arise another kingdom lower than you, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, since iron beats things into pieces and weakens all things. And as iron that breaks all these, it shall break in pieces, and it shall be broken. And as to that which you saw, the feet and the toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in the strength of it of the iron, because you saw the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of the iron and part of the clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly brittle. And whereas you saw iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mix themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cling to one another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and destroy all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Because you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron and the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass in the future. And the dream is certain, and the meaning of it is sure. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they should offer an offering and sweet perfumes to him. And the king answered Daniel and said, It is true that your God is a God of gods, and a Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets, since you could reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many gifts, and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon, and the chief of the governors over all these wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel asked the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Daniel chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was sixty cubits, and the breadth of it six cubits. And he set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, and the judges, and the treasures, and the advisers, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces, to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together to the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, and the harp, the sackbut, and the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, then ye shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship, the same hour they shall be thrown into the middle of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore at that time when all the people had heard the sound of the cornet, and the flute, and the harp, and the lyre, and the psaltery, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Therefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, and the lyre, and the psaltery, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship, he should be thrown into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the business of the provinces of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have despised you. They do not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded them to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 
Do you not serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and the psaltery, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, then fall down and worship the image which I have made. But if you do not worship, the same hour you shall be thrown into the middle of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God who shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. If it is so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the form of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded the most mighty men who were in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to throw them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were tied up in their tunics, and their mantles, and their turbans, and their other clothes, and were thrown into the middle of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was amazed, and he rose up in haste and spoke and said to his visors, and he arose up in haste and spoke and said to his advisers, Did we not throw three men bound into the middle of the fire? And they answered and said to the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the middle of the fire, and they have not been hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come forth and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth from the middle of the fire, and the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's advisers, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose body the fire has had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor had the smell of fire passed upon them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and has delivered his servants who trusted in him, and have changed the king's words and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language who speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other god who can deliver in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Chapter 4. We are reading the prophecy according to Daniel, chapter 4. Nebuchadnezzar the king to all the people, nations, languages that dwell upon the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I thought it good to declare the signs and wonders that the high God has done with me. How great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders! His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his rule is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house, and being blessed in my palace. And I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore I made a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known to me the meaning of the dream. Then the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the fortune-tellers came in, and I told the dream before them, but they did not make the meaning of it known to me. But at last Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, in whom is the Spirit of the holy gods. And I told the dream before him, saying, O Belshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the Spirit of the holy gods is in you, and no secret troubles you, tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen, and the meaning of it. 
so were the visions of my head upon my bed. I saw, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height of it was great. The tree grew strong, and was the height of it reached into the heavens, and the sight of it reached to the ends of the earth. The leaves of it were beautiful, and its fruit was plentiful, and in it was food for all. And the animals of the field had shade under it, and the birds of the heavens lived in the boughs of it, and all the flesh was fed by it. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said this, Cut down the tree and cut off its branches. Shake off its leaves and scatter its fruits. Let the animals get away from under it and the birds from its branches. But leave the stump of it, its roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field. And let it be wet with the dew of heaven. And let its portion be with the animals in the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let the heart of an animal be given to him, and let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones, so that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whomever he will, and sets up over it the lowest of men. I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen this dream. Now, O Belshazzar, Declare the meaning of it, because all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make the meaning known to me, but you are able, for the Spirit of the Holy God is in you. Then Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was dumb for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. And the king spoke and said, Belshazzar, do not let the dream or the meaning of it trouble you. And Belshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream is to those who hate you, and the meaning of it to your enemies. The tree that you saw, which grew and was strong, whose height reached into the heavens, and the sight of it to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit of it plentiful, and in it was food for all, under which the animals of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the birds of the heavens had their home. It is you, O king, who has grown and become strong, for your greatness has grown and reaches to the heavens, and your rule to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Cut the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the root of it in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let this portion be with the animals of the field until seven times pass over him. This is the meaning, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my lord the king." They shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the animals of the field. And they shall make you eat grass like oxen. And they shall wet you with the dew of heaven. And seven times shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he will. And in that they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots. Your kingdom shall be sure to you after you have known that heaven rules. Therefore, O king, let my advice be pleasing to you, and break off your sins by righteousness, and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if perhaps it may make your ease last longer. Now all this came upon the king. At the end of twelve months he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon, and the king spoke and said, Is this not great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom? by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. And while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the animals of the field. They shall make you to eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he will. In the same hour the thing fulfilled fell upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men and ate grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of the heavens, until his hair had grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. And at the end of the days I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes to heaven, 
and my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High. And I praised and honored him who lives forever, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his rule is from generation to generation. And all the people of the earth are counted as nothing, and he does according to his will in the army of heaven and amongst the people of the earth. And none can strike his hand or say to him, What doest thou? At the same time my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom my honor and brightness returned to me. And my advisers and my lords came to me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and honor the king of heaven, and all whose works are truth and his ways are judgment. And those who walk in pride he is able to humble. Daniel chapter 5. Now Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousands. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was in Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines, drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, and of brass and iron, and of wood and of stone. And in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand, and wrote upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace across from the lampstand. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote, then the king's face changed, and his thoughts were troubled, so that the joints of his loins were loosened, and his knees knocked against one another. And the king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the fortune-tellers. And the king spoke and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whoever shall read this writing and show me the meaning of it shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold around his neck, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom." Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing, nor make the meaning known to the king. Then King Belshazzar was greatly troubled, and his face was changing in him, and his lords were puzzled. Now the queen came into the banquet house because of the words of the king and his lords, and the queen spoke and said, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts trouble you, nor let your face be changed. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of your father there was found in him light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods. And the king Nebuchadnezzar, your father, the king, I say, made him master of the magicians and the astrologers and the Chaldeans and fortune-tellers, because an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding and explaining of dreams and showing of hard sentences and the melting away of doubts were found in the same man, Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the meaning. Then Daniel was brought in before the king, and the king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel who is the children of the captivity, the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? I have even heard of you that the spirit of the gods is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. And now the wise men and the magicians have been brought in before me so that they should read this writing, and make the meaning known to me, but they could not show the meaning of the thing. And I have heard of you that you can tell meanings and melt away doubts. Now if you can read the writing and make known to me the meaning of it, you shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let your gifts be to yourself and give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make the meaning known to him. O king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar your father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all the people and the nations and the languages trembled and feared before him. He killed whom he would, and whom he would he kept alive. And whom he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was put down from the throne of his kingdom, and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the animals, and his dwelling place was with the wild asses. 
They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of the heavens, until he knew that the Most High God rules in the kingdoms of the heavens, until he knew that the Most High God rules in the kingdoms of men as well, and that he appoints over it whomever he will, and that you, his son, O Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, though you know this, but you have lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords and your wives and your concubines have drunk wine from them, and you have praised the gods of silver and gold and brass and iron and wood and stone, which do not see nor hear nor know, and you have not glorified the God in whose hand your breath is, and to whom belong all your ways. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this was the writing. And this is the writing that was written, Meni, Meni, Tikel, Eupharsin. This is the meaning of the thing. Meni, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tikel, you are weighed in the balances and are found wanting. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Then Belshazzar commanded, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold around his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler of the kingdom. And that night Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, was killed, and Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about sixty-two years old. The Book of Daniel, Chapter 6 now it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom a hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these were three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, so that the princes might give account to him, and the king should have no loss. Then this Daniel was made overseer of the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king was planning to set him over the whole kingdom. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no occasion or fault, because he was faithful. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then these men said, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes gathered together to the king and said this to him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the advisers and the captains have planned together to establish a royal law and to make a firm decree that whoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days except from you, O king, he shall be thrown into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it may not be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be changed. Therefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went to his house, and his windows were open in his room toward Jerusalem. And he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God as he did before. Then these men gathered together and found Daniel praying and confessing before his God. Then they came near and spoke before the king concerning the king's decree. Have you not designed a decree that every man who shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days except of you, O king, shall be thrown into the lion's den? And the king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be changed. Then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is of the children of the captivity of Judah, has not respected you, O king nor the decree that you have signed, but makes his prayer three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was very much displeased with himself, and he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored until the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men met before the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king establishes may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and threw him into the lion's den. Now the king spoke and said to Daniel, Your God, whom you always serve, will deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, 
and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose must not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and hurried to the lion's den. And when he came to the den, he cried with a grieved voice to Daniel. And the king spoke and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is your God whom you always serve able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth, and they have not hurt me, because before him purity was found in me. They have not hurt me. And also before you, O king, I have done no harm. Then the king was exceeding glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. And so Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no kind of hurt was found on him, because he believed in his God. And the king commanded, and they brought those men who had accused Daniel, and they threw them into the lions, them, them and their children and their wives, and the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they came to the lower part of the den. Then King Darius wrote to all the people, nations and languages, who dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every government of my kingdom men shall tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and endures forever, and his kingdom is that which shall not be destroyed, and his rule shall even be unto the end. He delivers and rescues, he works signs and wonders in the heavens and in the earth. He who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions, so this Daniel was blessed in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. Chapter 7, Daniel chapter 7. Now in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and gave the sum of the matters. Daniel spoke and said, In my vision by night I was looking, and behold, the four winds of the heavens were bursting forth upon the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the sea, different from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I watched until its wings were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon its feet like a man. And a man's heart was given to it, and behold, another beast, a second, like a bear. And it raised itself up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said to this, Arise, eat up much flesh. And after this I beheld and lo, another, like a leopard, which had four wings of a bird on its back. And the beast also had four heads, and rulership was given to it. And after this I looked in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, fearful and terrible and very strong, and it had a great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in broken pieces and stamped the rest with its feet. And it was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I was thinking about the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom three of the first horns were pulled up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a man speaking great things. I watched until the thrones were put down, and the ancients of days sat, whose robe was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the flaming fire, and his wheels like burning fire. A stream of fire went out and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousands stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. I then watched because of the voice of the great words which the horn spoke. I watched until the beast was slain, and his body was destroyed and given to the burning flame. As to the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away. Yet their lives were made longer for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all people and nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, 
and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. And I came near one of those who stood by and asked him the truth of all this. And so he told me and made me know the meaning of the things. These great beasts which are four are four kings which shall rise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I wanted to know the truth of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, very frightening, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, who devoured in broken pieces and stamped the rest with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth speaking very great things, whose look was greater than his fellows, I watched, and the same horn made war with the saints, and overcame them until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom, so he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be different from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall trample it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall ar arise after them, and he shall be different from the first, and he shall humble three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and plot to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and a times and the dividing of time. But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his rulership to cut off and to destroy it until the end. And the kingdom and rulership and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heavens shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And all kingdoms shall serve and obey him. Here is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts troubled me much, and my face changed on me, but I kept the matter in my heart. We are reading from the prophecy according to Daniel. We continue chapter 8. Now in the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me, Daniel, after that which appeared to me at the first. And I looked in a vision, and when I looked... I was at Shushan, the palace, which is in the province of Elam. And in a vision I looked, and I was by the river of Uliah. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, there stood before the river a ram, which had two horns. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other. And the higher came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beast might stand before him, neither was there any who could deliver out of his hand. But he did according to his will, and became great. And as I was watching, behold, a he-goat came from the west over the face of the whole earth, and did not touch the ground. And the goat had an outstanding horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran to him in the fury of his power, and I saw him come close to the ram, and he was moved with anger against him, and struck the ram and broke his two horns, and there was no power in the ram to stand before him. But he threw him down to the ground and stamped upon him, and there was none who could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore the he-goat became very great, and when he was strong the great horn was broken, and in its place came up four outstanding ones toward the four winds of the heavens. And out of one of them came forth a little horn which became very great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And it became great even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. And the daily sacrifice was taken away by him and the place of his sanctuary was cast down, and an army was given to him against the daily sacrifice because of transgressions, and it cast the truth down to the ground, and it worked and succeeded. Then I heard a certain holy one speaking, and another holy one said to that certain holy one who spoke, How long shall the vision last? 
concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression that astounds to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trampled underfoot. And he said to me, For two thousand and three hundred days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. And when I, even Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning, then, behold, there stood before me the form of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uliah, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. And so he came near where I stood, and when he came I was afraid and fell upon my face. But he said to me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end the vision shall be. Now as he was speaking to with me I was in a deep sleep upon my face toward the ground. But he touched me and set me upright, and he said, Behold, I will make you to know what shall happen in the last end of the indignation, for at the time appointed the end shall come. The ram which you saw having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia, and the rough goat is the king of Greece, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now that being broken, four stood up in its place. Four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nations, but not in its power. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have come to the full, a king fierce of face, and who understands hidden things, shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderful things, and shall work and succeed, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people." And also through his understanding he shall cause deceit to succeed in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He also shall stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without the use of a hand. And the vision of the evening and the morning which we're told is true. Therefore shut up the vision, for it shall be for many days. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick for some days. Afterward I rose up and did the king's business, and I was amazed at the vision, but none understood it. Daniel chapter 9. In the first year of Darius, the king of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood the number of the years by books, the time by which the Lord came to Jeremiah, the prophet, that he would accomplish seventy years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face toward the Lord God to seek by prayer and holy desires with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and awesome God, keeping the covenant and mercy to those who love him and to those who keep his commandments, we have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy commandments and from thy judgments. Neither have we listened to thy servants, the prophets, who spoke in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongs to thee, but unto us the shame of our faces, as it is today, to the men of Judah, and to the people of Jerusalem, and to all of Israel who are near and who are afar off through all the countries where thou hast driven them because of their sin, which they have sinned against thee. O Lord, to us belongs a face of shame to our kings, and to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgivenesses, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants and prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy laws, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse has been poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And he has confirmed his words which he spoke against us, and against our judges who judged us, by bringing upon us a greater evil. For under the whole heaven it has not been done, as it has been done unto Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. Yet we did not make our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore the Lord has watched over the evil and has brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, 
which he does. For we did not obey his voice. And now, O Lord, our God, who has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has brought fame unto thyself, as it is today we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Lord, I pray thee, according to all thy righteousness, let thy anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers Jerusalem and thy people have they have become a curse to all those who are around us. Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his holy desires, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O my God, bow down thy ear and hear. Open thy eyes and behold our ruins and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our prayers before thee on account of our righteousness, but because of thy great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, listen and do. Do not delay. For thy own sake, O my God, for thy city and for thy people who are called by thy name. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sins and the sin of my people and presenting my cry before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yes, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, touched me, being caused to fly swiftly about the time of the evening sacrifice. And he gave me understanding and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill and understanding. At the beginning of your prayers the commandment came forth, and I have come to show you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter, and attend to the vision. Seventy weeks are divided as to your people and as to your holy city, to finish the transgression, and make an end of sins, and to make atonement for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the Most Holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in times of affliction. And after seventy-two weeks Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end of it shall be with a flood, and desolations are determined unto the end, and there shall be war. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the offering to cease. And by the overspreading of abominations he is laying waste even until the end and that which was decreed shall be poured upon the desolate one. Daniel chapter 10. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing, and had understanding of the vision. In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no food for delight, neither came flesh, nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all until three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the twenty-fourth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Tigris, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man was clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphaz. His body also was like the beryl, and his face looked like lightning and his eyes were like lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet in color were like polished brass, and the voice of his words like the sound of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my beauty was turned within me to corruption, and I kept no strength. Yet I heard the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then I was in a deep sleep upon my face, and my face was toward the ground. 
And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you, and stand upright. For unto you I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from this day that you set your heart to understand and to chasten yourself before your God, from this day your words were heard, and I come for your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what shall happen in your people in the latter days. For the vision is yet for many days. And when he had spoken such words to me, I bowed my face toward the ground, and I became dumb. And behold, one looking like the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke and said to him who stood before me, O oh, my Lord, my sorrows are turned upon me by the visions, and I have kept no strength. For how can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? For as me, immediately there remained no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Then there came one again looking like a man and touched me, and he made me stronger and said, O oh, man, greatly beloved, do not fear. Peace to you. Be strong, yes, be strong. And when he had spoken to me, I was made stronger and said, Let my word speak, for you have made me stronger. And then he said, Do you know why I come to you? And now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, lo, the prince of Greece shall come. But I will show you that which is written in the scripture of truth. And there is none who holds strongly with me in these things but Michael your prince. Daniel chapter 11. Also in the first year of Darius the Mede, I, even I, stood to establish and to strengthen him. And now I will show you the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than all of them. And by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the kingdom of Greece. And a mighty king shall stand up, one who shall rule with great power, and do according to his will. And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken, and shall be divided toward the four winds of the heavens. And it shall not be given to his children, nor according to his power, with which he ruled. For his kingdom shall be pulled up even for others beside these. And the king of the south shall be strong, and one of his princes, even he, shall overcome him and have power. His kingdom shall be a great kingdom, and in the end of the years they shall join themselves together, for the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north to make a treaty. But he shall not keep the power of the arm, neither shall he stand nor his arm, but she shall be given up, and those who brought her in, and he whom she bore, and he who made her strong in these times. But out of a branch of her roots one shall stand up in his place, who shall come with an army, and shall enter into the fortress of the king of the north. And he shall act against him, and show himself strong. And he shall also carry their gods captive into Egypt, and their princes, and with their precious vessels of silver and of gold. And he shall stand more years than the king of the north. And so the king of the south shall come into his kingdom, and shall return into his own land. But his son shall be stirred up, and shall gather a multitude of great forces. And one shall certainly come and overflow and pass through. Then he shall return and be stirred up, even to his fortress. And the king of the south shall be moved with anger, and shall come forth and fight with him, even with the king of the north. And he shall send forth a great multitude, but the multitude shall be given into his hand. And when he has taken away the multitude, his heart shall be lifted up. And he shall cast down many ten thousands, but he shall not be made stronger by it. For the king of the north shall return, and shall send forth a multitude greater than the former, and shall certainly come after certain years with a great army and with much riches. 
and in those times there shall stand up many against the king of the south. Also the robbers of your people shall lift themselves up to establish the vision, but they shall fall. And so the king of the north shall come and cast up a siege mound, and shall take most of the fenced cities. And the arms of the south shall not hold out, neither his chosen people, neither shall there be any strength to hold out. But he who comes against him shall do according to his own will, and none shall stand before him, and he shall stand in the glorious land which shall be destroyed by his hand. He shall also set his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom, and upright ones with him, so he shall do. And he shall give him the daughter of women to corrupt her, but she shall not stand on his side, neither be for him. And after this he shall turn his face to the isles, and shall take many. But a prince on his own behalf shall cause the shame offered by him to cease. Without his own shame he shall cause it to turn upon him. Then he shall turn his face toward the fort of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall, and shall not be found. Then there shall stand up in this place a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom, but within few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. And in his place there shall stand up a despised one, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall turn and come in quietly, and take the kingdoms by flatteries. And with the arms of an overflowing flood he shall sweep all before him, and they shall be broken, and also the prince of the covenant. And after the treaty was made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. And he shall enter safely upon the rich places of the province, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter the prey and spoil and riches among them. And he shall devise his plots against the strongholds even for a time. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall devise plots against him. Yea, those who have been eating his food shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow. And many shall fall down slain, and both these kings' hearts in them shall be to do evil, and they shall speak lies at one table. But it shall not succeed, for yet the end shall come at the time appointed. Then he shall return to his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall work, and he shall return to his own land. And at the time appointed he shall return and come again to the south, against the south. But it shall not be as the former or as the latter, for the ships of Shittim shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have fury against the holy covenant. So he shall do. He shall even return and give heed to those who forsake the holy covenant and arms shall stand in his part, and they shall defile the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination of the desolator. And those who do wickedly against the covenant he shall ruin by flatteries, but the people who know their God shall be strong and do well. And those who understand amongst the people shall teach many, Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, and by captivity by spoil, for many days. And now when they shall fall, they shall be helped with a little help, but many shall cling to them with flatteries. And some of those of understanding shall fall to try them, and to purge them, and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is still appointed for a time. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall lift himself up and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall succeed until the fury is fulfilled, for that which is decreed shall be done. Neither shall he regard the god of his fathers, nor the desire of the women, nor regard any god, for he shall magnify himself above all. 
But in his place he shall honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers did not know. He shall honor with gold and silver, and with precious stones, and with desirable things. So he shall do well in the fortresses of the strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall make known. And he will multiply him in glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for a price. And at the time of the end, the king of the south shall push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots, and with horsemen, and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries, and shall overflow, and pass over. He shall also enter into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand, Edom and Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and to completely do away with many. And he shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. Daniel chapter 12 And at that time Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands for the children of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation until that time. And that time your people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine as the brightness of the sky. And those who turn many to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever and ever. But you, O Daniel, set up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro. Knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood another two, the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen who was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be until the end of these waters? And I heard the man clothed in linen who was upon the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for time, times, and a half. That is, for a time, times, and a half. And when they have made an end of scattering the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I did not understand. Then I said, O oh, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination of the desolator set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the thousand three hundred and thirty-five days. But go your way unto the end, for you shall rest and stand in your lot at the end of the day.